My first guest is a tireless entrepreneur and master marketer. He's built a business essentially around sending messages and he's got one for anyone in business or people trying to grow their personal brand. Think big. Welcome, Kim Elman. Thanks for joining us on the program, mate. Oh, who'd turn it up, Pete? <laughs> who'd turn it up? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. One thing I want to do is get to the, the heart and soul of how you've built this great business of yours. So it's called Messages on Hold Australia. It is. Okay. So tell us about when it started and how big you are now. Well, uh, I was getting my mic put on tonight and I used to do that job at Channel 9. I was an audio engineer right. in Perth many years ago and I got sacked. <laughs> and I thought, what the hell have I done here? And anyway, I bounced back on my feet. I got a contract with Jeans West to do an in-store radio program. Went out on cassette every week. That was going back in 1988. Right. Uh, then I hit on this idea after being put on hold at Amex one day where I heard some advertising while I was waiting on the telephone. Right. I thought... That's a brilliant idea. I've worked in radio, worked in television. I can write it, I can voice it. So I thought, I'll go out and sell that. And I sold my first client, my yeah. second client. Yeah. Well, today, we do the on-hold productions that you hear at over 11,000 sites around Asia Pacific. They come out of our production centre in Perth. And every time somebody gets put on hold, they should be listening to something interesting about the business they're calling. And then this is the bottom line. You reckon that people who have maybe listened to a radio station, that's no benefit to the business. And so you it's an opportunity to actually mark effectively to potential customers. How crazy is it? If I'm ringing someone to buy a computer and they're telling me McDonald's has got a half price special, what do I care about that? I want to buy a computer. Mm -hmm. So in that 30 seconds there's an idea. There's an opportunity to sow an idea in that person's mind such that when the person answers the call and somebody goes, hey, I just heard you got a special on whatever, mm -hmm. they go, yeah, we have. Mm -hmm. It does the selling for you. I know you, you eventually talked me into doing it for my operation and I remember people who, who would ring me up thinking that I was primarily someone who worked in the media and they worked out, they found out that I've got a financial planning business, a business coaching operation and people would say, I didn't even know you even did speeches and that sort of stuff was marketing opportunities that were being passed up because I didn't know how valuable the message and hold idea was. It floors me the number of business people who say, oh look, uh, we don't put people on hold. Let mm. me tell you, everybody goes on hold at most businesses. Mm. Unless you're a one man band and you pick the phone up mm. and you're going to take that call and answer it there and then, most people have to spend some time on hold. Now I remember the first time I got an idea of what you're up to. I think you won the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award for the Fin Review, early yep. 90s, wasn't it? 95, I won the Australian Young Business Achiever of the Year when I had a bit more hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would have as well. But the thing is that what actually brought your attention, the attention to many people, was the fact that you, you were paying kids to go along to watch the West Coast Eagles. Tell us that story. It's a great story. Well, because I'd sit at home and I'd watch the footy and I'd see these kids sitting behind the goals and they weren't holding anything up mm. and I'm thinking, I've got no money to spend on advertising, mm. starting a small business. So I went down there and I paid them all five bucks a pop, picked ten or twelve kids mm. and they'd hold up this messages on hold sign. Mm. And, and I'm behind the umpire where the camera yeah, goes. It's That's... a locked off shot, guaranteed exposure. Yeah. And I got away with that for six weeks until I got a bit cocky and called up the Sunday Times and they did a story and then I got kicked out the next week and I went back with some more people the weekend after that and I got kicked out again, got another story about getting kicked out and then the Eagles eventually called me up and said, look, this is crazy, mm. let's do a deal. So we're now a sponsor and have been for some, uh, probably 16 years. Okay. Now, whatever your, your, your wildest and wacky innovation was to go after Warney when Warney had lost a sponsor or two, which in the old days could happen if he made a mistake or whatever, and you were sort of sensible enough to, to approach him, and he said yes. Yeah, it took a long time. It took nine months, and we thought Shane was great for our business because uh, messages on hold, we're a bit cheeky, uh, sometimes irreverent, uh, colourful. Yeah. Good at what we do. Sounds like warning. It's exactly warning. And he's also an expert leaving messages on hold as well. You think well, <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. When we launched with Shane going back a few years ago, the media thought there was this great tie and Oh, Shane, you're a... Uh, a serial text yeah. message and now you're doing messages on hold. What's the tie-in? It was completely different. Yeah, yeah. So, but how do you work out the return on investment of something like that? Damn near impossible. Yeah. It's, to me... Look, it's a lot of anecdotal evidence. Mm. The fact that when I uh, have a whole lot of people that I want to invite, CEOs of companies, they're not going to come to dinner with me. But mm. you say, come along and have dinner with Warney and me, and I'm there. Yeah. And they'll change their plans. I've had people who've had boxes at the cricket, and they say, I'm not doing that. I'm coming to dinner with Warney because mm. I want to hear what he's got to say. Mm. And, of course, the gender's such tremendous goodwill. Um, how has the ambush marketing thing reacted with, say, the, the public at home in Perth. I, I know 
it, it works brilliantly from afar, but have you ever caught any backlash because it's oh, becoming a serial pest? Oh, I'm notorious for that. Uh, the serial pest, notorious serial pest, I'm current affair, they call me a couple of times, but you know, that's water off a duck's back. I've only ever made one mistake where I held up a sign, a big messages on hold sign, uh, behind an interviewer, uh, a live TV broadcaster, because I thought it was a sports story mm. and it was a, sport, a sporting story about a young kid that had died at the footy. Mm. And as soon as I found out that, uh, you know, I, I slunk off with my tail between my legs and yeah, I copped a bit of bad press for it and I deserved yeah. it because okay. I, I made a mistake. What about, you've also got your employees engaged with the process and there was one held up at a, a, a meeting between, was it Clinton and Yasser Arafat or something like that? Well, that one was actually Clinton and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, and I was in the audience in Jerusalem, and I'd taken this hand, and I'm waving it away, and the, both of the world leaders are pointing up there. They think it's quite funny, and all the cameras swing around, and CNN and everyone. Of course, I've got somebody taping it back here in Australia, and that goes straight up on our website as a, as a hit. Okay, so... Clearly the business is not ambush marketing, but no. in a sense it's become like your trademark to draw attention to the business. Does it always work that way that people actually link the fact that, OK, he's getting attention, but also... We Does it sell? Yeah. It does in, in a funny way because we do a lot of marketing with uh, bulk faxing, with uh, some fun email campaigns and with word of mouth. So. One thing is, if, I'm, if I haven't got a well-known brand and people haven't seen me and I ring them up and I say, hey, Pete, uh, how would you like this concept? You need to answer in your mind, are these guys any good? Have they been around? Do I know them? Well, all the stuff that we've done in the past ticks all three boxes. Mm. You don't have to consider that. Whereas if I'm a new player, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of a struggle. Mm. Now, recently, uh, I think it was a current affair, you're offering a home on the Gold Coast for a dollar a night. What was the thinking behind that? And, and does it relate back to the, the business? Uh, the message group contains messages on hold, Dream Holiday Homes, uh, KimElman.com, okay. so, and Message Vision. And I thought, I've got these beautiful holiday homes that are worth 2 to $6 million. You can get on there at dreamholidayhomes.com.au. Oh, here you go. Uh, it'd be right. remiss of me not to get yeah, that that's in. Right. And I thought, I've got this $6 million home. How do I get some publicity? Mm. I'll get on to Current Affair, mm. and I'll say, right, let's give it away for a dollar a night. Mm. And, of course, we do this great story. I had 20,000 people register for that special mm. in four hours. Mm. And I got this most marvellous exposure for the property. Two people got a week there for uh, $7, mm. which is exceptional. And uh, I guess you've got, you got leads for people who might potentially rent yeah. it anyway. That's right. Yeah. And it just builds up uh, the prestige of the property, the exposure. People go onto my website, they see that story, and they go, yeah. oh, this must be a good property. As, as Edward DeBain has said, it's lateral thinking that gives you a competitive edge in many areas. And, this is the thing, I think a lot of people say, oh, look, I'll just go and put an ad in the paper or radio or whatever the case. Yeah, that's good, but you've got to get people in seven or eight different instances. Word of mouth, something on the internet, something on radio, something on telly, something when you ring in and get put on hold. So yeah. it's no good having one idea. You've got to be getting them on so many different levels because people are tough. They don't want to stop uh, and listen to your message. Yeah, now, one of your, uh, your most innovative um, forms of drawing attention to your business was a, was a clip that we're going to show right now. So... We've got a clip and it shows your lateral thinking, I think, it's at its It's a viral best. video that works a treat. It's a viral video. Mm. Okay. How are we going? Last here? night, billions around the globe watched on as the world's greatest business mind was crowned at a glittering ceremony. Greg Marston has more. That's right, Deanne. 4,000 business legends, celebrities, entertainers and political leaders from around the globe filed into the Hilton Hotel for a night of glamour, tension and high excitement. Today, this is the name on everyone's lips. Greg, were the experts expecting this result? Very much so, Deanne. I'm told this was the shortest priced winner in the awards 98 year history and the decision was unanimous. When you combine the marketing prowess of Richard Branson, the shrewdness of Donald Trump and the vision of Lee Kuan Yew, that's a pretty impressive package. Sarah Lockery, you're in Sydney, Australia this morning. What's been the reaction from the Harbour City? Deanne, what we've witnessed this morning has been nothing short of remarkable. As today's papers will attest, many pundits are labelling this passionate and brilliant achiever the greatest business mind of all time. Qantas Airways was certainly impressed. Within hours of the announcement, they surprised everyone by naming their latest A380 Airbus after this year's popular winner. The reaction from Asia has also been enthusiastic. Sharon Chen joins us live. Sharon, what's the latest? 
Diane, a number of governments in the region have declared today a public holiday in honor of this truly awe-inspiring business visionary. These were the seeds earlier today as hundreds of thousands flooded the city streets to celebrate among the most vocal local youths. We need someone to look up to and emulate and I can't think of a better role model for our generation. Yeah! Over at the National Stadium, a crowd estimated at more than 40,000 gathered to pay homage to the one, they say, embodies all that is good in the international business community. The announcement of this year's winner has had a powerful impact on leaders in the Middle East. Speculation is mounting. This year's world's greatest business mind will be putting their formidable negotiation skills honed across the boardroom table to work, brokering a long overdue peace deal. العربية والإسلامية بألف خير وكل عام وشعبنا الفلسطيني بألف خير نرجو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعيده علينا ونحن في أحسن حال One businessman who has had close associations with this year's winner is the message group's executive chairman, Kim Ilman When I heard the announcement on the radio this morning I tell you I cried I wept like a baby I'm just so very proud to say that we at the message group have had an opportunity to work with this transformational business guru, this Svengali of innovation, this leader of leaders. Is this live? It is. Great. If you're watching, I'm your biggest fan. Yeah, mate, these are fantastic. And when you sent it to me, I, I laughed my head off. But the thing is, how many people did you send that out to? I sent it to 13,000 as a Christmas card last December. Mm. It's been viewed 6.6 6 million times. Mm. And the thing is that everyone who watches it is the star. Mm. It's, they don't see Peter Switzer in every show. No, okay. They see no. their own name. Yeah. And it's just so catchy because it's about you. And yeah. who doesn't like to see their name in lights? No, exactly. But the yeah. other one yeah. is DonaldTrumpWon'tShutUp.com. That's yeah. even better. Yeah. And these are all on your website if people want to check these out as well. The, 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 yeah, they can get to it, but they're better off just typing DonaldTrumpWon'tShutUp.com or WorldsGreatestBusinessMind.com. They're yeah. rippers. And, and so who dreamt, dreamt this up? Who, 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 or, or did you hear that viral Me? marketing? You dreamt Me? it? Well, look, I pinched a couple. As with most things, I see things and I go, oh, I'll adapt that for me. Mm. Yeah. So I saw something out of the US and said to my guys, you know, Gary and uh, Kepper and Dan in the office, said, can we do something like this? And they said, let's have a look. Yeah, we can do that. Mm. And those things take between three and 450 hours to do. Mm. And we've had so many clients come to us, we've done several others for them, and they're forty to $50,000 jobs. Do they become business opportunities that people say, do one for me? Oh, yeah. It's become a profit centre as well. I've got, yeah, mm. um, a lot of hours involved, but the people who say yes to them get good returns. Mm. They, they see incoming leads, they see clicks going over and over, they go, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, and how many, how many times has it been viewed by people? Six, six and a half million, 6.6 .6 million, yeah, and the on. new one uh, probably a hundred thousand in a week. Okay, we're running short of time. What's the future of the company? Consolidation. Mm. Uh, we've looked at overseas and we've uh, pulled our head uh, back in a little bit, but Singapore and Australia are our markets. Mm. Uh, it's a great business. It's it's needed today. Mm. People are finding it hard to find new customers. So the ones they've got on hold are the ones that they should be marketing to and getting more of their products out um, to those people that they don't realise. Will it ever list? Do you reckon? No, never, ever. You don't want to be involved uh, in that. It's love, my baby, yeah. and I'll do what I want when I want. Yeah, because you've been involved in a couple of listed companies, haven't you? Or oh, have gone yeah, listed. I, I did all right out of those, but mm. I've seen what dramas there are. Too hard for me. Mate, thanks for joining us on Switzerland. Oh, it's a delight. Thanks, mate.